Good morning, boys and girls. We're so excited that you're joining us again for Sunday School. We have another awesome story this morning about a guy named Joshua who led God's people to do something that didn't really make a lot of sense, but they got to see God do something pretty amazing. We're going to sing some songs here in a bit, but before we do, let's remember our memory verse. It's down below, and it says, For all the promises of God find their yes in Him. And that's in Jesus. We're learning about all these stories about cool guys like Daniel and David. And what we're learning is they point us to Jesus, who is our hero and our champion. So before we hear our story this morning, how about we sing some songs? Today the same forever. 
right, that was awesome. So now it's time for a Bible story. Like I said, we're hearing about a guy named Joshua, and he led God's people to do something that didn't make a lot of sense. But God showed up in an awesome way, and they got to see God do something that blew their minds. So now Mrs. Nancy is going to tell us our story. So Joshua and the people of Israel were finally getting to make their home in the land that God had promised them. But there was a problem, like I mentioned, and it was a pretty big one. There were people living there in that land that God had promised to the Israelites. And they didn't like the Israelites. It wasn't going to be an easy job to get them to move out and let the Israelites in. The first city they came to was the city of Jericho. And it had huge walls all around the city. And they had a huge army. How were those Israelites who had just come from wandering in the desert for 40 years, how are they going to conquer this big city of, Jizer of Jericho with all these walls? God had a plan, but it didn't seem to make any sense. Joshua prayed and asked God what they should do, and this was God's plan. March around the city. Yep, that's it. That's all they were supposed to do. So I have these girls helping me today. They're going to pretend that they're the Israelite people and they've brought some of their favorite animals to march around the city with. So, They were supposed to march around the city for six days, once a day, and then have the priests blow their, their trumpets. But they had to tell everybody, don't say a word for those six days. And then on the seventh day, they had to march around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, everybody was supposed to shout as loud as they could. How was that going to do anything? I think Joshua might have had a hard time telling the people what God said they needed to do. I'm sure he was worried that they might have thought he was absolutely crazy. They had a choice to have faith and trust in God and do what he said, even if it didn't make sense to them. So here's your chance, girls. Are you ready? Day after day, they obeyed. They walked once around the city. They marched around the city. Yeah, go ahead. But they didn't say a word, and then they returned to their camp. That was day one. And on day two, they did the same thing. They got up and they marched around the city. They didn't say a word and they returned to camp. And they did that for day three and day four and day five and day six. And then on day seven, they got up and they marched around the city seven times. And for those six times, they didn't say a word. And on the seventh time, they shouted as loud as they could, Yay, God! Praise God! And look what happened. The wall fell down. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout, just like what we did. And the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. And that's in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. The walls came tumbling down. Can you believe it? 
they didn't do anything but walk and play their trumpets and yell, and God made that wall fall right down. The Israelites rushed in, and they took over the city. And this was just one of the many times that Joshua led the people into battle, and they had victory because God helped them. God wanted them to live and build their homes in the land that he had promised to them. It kind of seemed funny to me what God asked the people to do. He asked them to do something that didn't make a lot of sense and to trust that he was going to do something amazing. It's the same way for us, same way for me. God sometimes tells us to do something that just doesn't make sense. To trust him that he's going to do something amazing. The very first thing he asks us to do, and you girls have probably done this, he asks us to trust him that he loves us and that he sent Jesus. So like we talked about the last few weeks, we need to be saved. This is, um, there's this thing called sin that keeps us from knowing God. We do things that are wrong. Sometimes we don't obey. And when we do wrong, the first thing we want to do is try and make it right. Try and do something to make it right with God again. And we can do that. We can ask God to forgive us. But we don't really have to work. We don't have to go out and do something. We just have to trust God that he forgives us when we ask him. I'm sure the people of Israel wanted to do more than just walk around the walls of Jericho. I bet on day three and day four they were probably thinking, wow, this is crazy. What are we actually doing that's good? And sometimes we think like that. We think we have to do a bunch of good things to convince, to convince Jesus that he, loved, that he loves us and to save us. But instead, God asks us just to trust him, to have faith in Jesus and to trust that Jesus did everything that we need done to save us. When we have bad days, when we struggle to do what's right, and I do that, when bad things are happen, the first thing we want to do is try and fix it. To come up with something of our own plan. But instead, we just need to trust Jesus. Trust what he says. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So that says trust God and, and do what he and what he says. To trust what he says. Whatever happens, we should ask him what to do. So we need to read the Bible and we need to pray to hear what he's saying to us. And then, even if it doesn't make sense. We need to trust him and do what he asks. I trust that he saved me. And I hope that you trust that he saved you as well. Do you trust him? And I'm going to trust him that when I ask, he's going to do something amazing, just like he did with the walls of Jericho. That was crazy. Who would have thought that marching around the walls of a city would make the walls fall to the ground? It's pretty cool how even when it didn't make sense to the Israelites, God still showed up in an amazing way and did something pretty spectacular. It's the same way in our lives. Sometimes God asks us to do things that doesn't make sense. But when we trust him, we get to see him do things that will blow our minds. Now we're going to explain our craft to you. Mrs. Nancy is going to show you a craft that you get to build some walls of yourself and then tear them down. So for the younger kids, 
this is the package that you're going to get. And there will be an instruction sheet in there as well. So let's look and see what's in your package. There is a plate. There's a package of Smarties. Don't eat those yet. We need those to build with. You can eat them later. There's a package of crackers. There's a knife to help you out. There's some glue. So this glue is made up of peanut butter and icing sugar. And that's what's going to hold our crackers together as we make that wall that God knocked down. And then there's a little box of peanuts. We're going to make our wall first. I'm going to put a line of icing down here. And then all we're going to do is make that wall. We're going to put the crackers in. Set them up. Another little bit of icing along here. And a little bit of icing up the side of the cracker. And then I'm going to stick that cracker there like that. And that's going to start to build my wall. Once you're done your wall, you could take the rest of your icing and you could put little dots here. Use your reasons. Those could, we could pretend that those were the people of Israel that were marching around the wall. So once you get your wall all together, take a picture, and then you can pretend that God knocked it down. And guess what? You get to eat it. So, boys and girls, this is the craft for the older children. So kind of the same idea as what, as what the younger kids, you just saw for the younger kids. And put a line of icing up your cookie. And then you can put another cookie on there. You could choose to make, make your wall, just make it one layer. Or you could be adventurous and you could make double layered wall. I used the straws in the corner, in the corners, so that I could build the cookies up and make two high cookies. Once I got it together, I just used my scissors and I cut the straws off once I got it high enough. So those are the walls and then as I said, you'll get some other decorations. These ones kind of, I thought they might look like rocks up against the bottom of the walls here. You could use them like that. Um, these are little kind of round things that might uh, work for windows in the walls. So I'm going to leave that up to your imagination. Again, take a picture and, and save the picture, and then once you've got the picture and you're hungry, eat your walls. That should be lots of fun. Well, we hope you guys have so much fun with those crafts, building your walls and then tearing them down and eating them. That's all that we have for today. I hope you guys always remember that even when God asks us to do things that don't make sense, we can trust Him that He is still going to show up in some pretty amazing ways, just like He did for Joshua and the Israelites. I'm going to pray for us, then we're going to be all done for today. Dear God, we thank you so much that you love us and that you take care of us. We thank you that even when you ask us to do things that, that don't really make sense, that you have a plan and that you show up in amazing, spectacular ways. We love you, God, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good week, boys and girls, and we will see you next week.